Standing on top of Mount Airy Hill Thinking about flying So Been around but now I'm gone Been gone, but now I'm going down. I was flying high through the night when the morning came, but I was gone. If you know what I mean I was around but now I'm gone Been done down but now I'm just way down low Watch my moves It do the snake and the grass It do the wiggle it around now Way down low I was around but now I'm gone Been gone but now I'm a just away gone Been around but now I'm gone Been gone but now I'm way gone Hey there, I'm Mac Wilson with The Current, and I am sitting here chatting with Kurt Vile, who is in town to play at First Ave. Hi, Kurt. Hi. It is good to see you back in. So the first song that you played is Mount Airy Hill. Uh, so the question, you're going to think that this is silly, is Mount Airy Hill, I know it's a neighborhood, but is there a literal hill like you talk about in the song? Well, I, I think when I wrote it, it was like a simple idea. It is hilly, but there's not, I don't know if there's an actual Mount Airy Hill, but it's like a... I think in the back of my head, I was thinking of that Peter Gabriel song. It's like kind of like an epic, What what is it? Salisbury Hill? I don't know what he says, yeah. but it's such a good song. But uh, I live in Mount Airy and it's 
It's basically this oasis. I mean, it's nostalgic to me because I live there, but it is beautiful and there's just forests and uh, just trees and mountains and hills everywhere. And not like, you just wouldn't even think it's there, you know, and it's beautiful. Like the Wissahickon is there and all these things. It's, uh, but it's still in the city. So if somebody is going to Mount Airy Hill in the, uh, in the Philadelphia area, where would you recommend they go to eat? What, off the top of your head, well, where's the one place they should go? That's sort of the beauty of Mount Airy, for now at least, is there's not really many choices, you know? Um, in fact, I'm spacing on a, a great restaurant to go sit in, per se, but I, we, we always just get Tiffin Indian food, and I go to um, High Point. Uh, coffee shop and I go to Weaver's Way which is the grocery store there's like only so many things to do that's, maybe that's why I love it <laughs> so Kurt you're the first uh, in studio session that I have hosted in person in this building since uh, February of 2020 and the last uh, band that I interviewed was Destroyer so Dan Behar oh yeah and the album that he was uh, touring behind at the time, it was uh, one of the, the the gimmicks behind it was that he recorded all the vocals in his house, like sitting at his kitchen table at night after his family had gone to bed. And I said something like, well, by the looks of things with the news and the pandemic, we're all going to be headed in, in that direction soon. And that kind of wound up being what you did with this record. So can you walk us through a little bit about the, uh, the you know, setting up a studio in your own house? Yeah, well... Uh, the beauty was that I was planning to do that anyway, and also that's where I come from, and my, my early albums are recorded at home, and it's not that hard. It's very easy to record in your house these days. You know, uh, you can put in a little money or a lot, you know, depending, and, uh, you know, in the early days, I used a little Roland Digital 8-track, but I, I knew I was ready to check out anyway. You know, I was ready. I My buddy Adam, who happens to be in the band now, he moved to Philly from... Boston, you know, a couple of years ago, and, and we started pre-pandemic building my studio up, and I, I knew I was going to make a record for Verve, you know, and just do, at least have the capabilities to work at home, you know, in higher fidelity, and that's what I did, uh, but I talked to my producer, Rob Schnaff, a lot throughout it, and then it became apparent, like we did one session with Rob Schnaff before the pandemic hit and we got that song cool water which is a great song and the, the springsteen cover uh wages of sin so and then when the pandemic hit i knew for sure i was like well i like hanging out with rob schnaff and talking we would talk over the phone so i was like between my house i want you know it, it's it's simplified things i was like well i'm either going to go to la and work with rob not with a million producers or work at home you know and uh, so that's what happened so that Bruce Springsteen song, that's even if somebody is fairly devoted to Springsteen, that might be a relative deep cut for that one. What record is Wages of Sin on? Wages of Sin is not on a record, but it's on a compilation that came out like in the early 90s. It's on track? It's on track. Okay, got it. And well, it, it was yeah. an outtake from uh, Born in the USA. It's such a great song. You understand why he left it off since Born in the USA was like the original blockbuster box office type of album, you know, uh, when the record companies decided, oh, well, we're going to put even more money into this and make it huger than it already would be anyway, or, you know, something like, so one of the million Springsteen books I've read goes or whatever. But yeah, it's a beautiful deep cut. Uh, I, I've had a, a good handful of cover songs in my, you know, that I've recorded, they have to speak to me that I have to be able to deliver them sort of verbatim, but then give my own twist. I'm good. At, I'm good at kind of doing both. I'm good at impressions, but then somehow it becomes mine at the same time. One of the big releases that I want to see someday is the box set for Born in the USA. Like if he released everything that he recorded during that period. Well, you know he will. I mean, what did he do last? He did the river. Uh -huh. it's, it's coming around the pipe, my friend. That's one of those things that <laughs> I'm just kind of holding out for, that, that Born in the USA box set. Yeah. Kurt, let's play one more song. You're going to play Like Exploding Stones. Yep. This is uh, the latest single. Or maybe it's still the first single. It's, it's still going strong, I'm told. Thanks for playing it. And here's an acoustic version for you. Woo. 
pain ricocheting in my brain like exploding stones. Thoughts running round in my cranium like pinball machine mania. Dreaming of a time when everything rhymed and I was cool, calm, collected. And all of my heroes dropped by just to hear me play. Thoughts become pictures, become movies in my mind. Yeah. Welcome to the KV Horror Drive-In Movie Marathon. But I'm just kidding and I'm just playing, and this is just the way that I'm making a living. Every day in my mind and in real life too. Going woo, singing yeah. Going woo, singing yeah. Going woo. Taking off now. Watch me. Watch me as I go. Painful calculations bruise my brain in the pouring rain. Baby red maples are growing in the hedges as well. Sometimes the silver linings come in brown and red. So to see with your eyes, you gotta turn your head to the light. Sometimes you gotta see with your eyes just to look. At what's out of sight, going out of sight. Pain ricocheting in my brain like exploding stones. Thanks for letting me do that. Mac Wilson in the current studio with Kurt Vile, and that was like exploding stones from the new record, Watch My Moves. So uh, this week that we're recording this now, it was Bob Dylan's birthday. How old is he now? 81. Wow, that's beautiful. I played, when he turned 75, I played the Ryman for like a celebration. He wasn't there. But you know, the, that one, I forget the name of the group that do like... They did like, um, they made an HBO special for George Harrison's birthday. Uh, Danny Harrison was at this thing I did for Dylan's 75th birthday and everything like that. But yeah, it's, so it's trippy. It was, uh, it's also when I recorded my first John Prine cover, uh, Speed of the Sound of Loneliness. I, anyway, I'm just, I'm getting nostalgic for what year was that? 2015? I have no idea anymore. It's, but. But yeah, Dylan, happy birthday. Uh, I got to say, too, Jeff Gans, who does all of Dylan's art since um, 
since Time Out of Mind, he did the artwork to my album. It was a, it was a cool collaboration, but yeah, Dylan, he's my man. Kurt, uh, in the light of John Prine's passing uh, two years ago, given that you worked with him, uh, is it a, a tricky subject to talk about? Like with, no. working with John? Okay. No. I just, I honestly, I don't want to intrude. No. On it if it, if it is it, it basic, if it's a too emotional of a thing, mm. but uh, I'm, I'm curious. I don't know if we've had the chance to chat about how that collaboration came to be. Yeah. I mean, okay. So literally on Dylan's 75th birthday, I went to Nashville to, to play this, Two Nights at the Ryman. It was the first time I ever played the Ryman. A lot of people played Dylan's songs. And then uh, I, I was a huge Prime fan then. I had been for, since my early 20s, mid-20s. Um, I was 35 when I got to Nashville to do this. Um, or 36, doesn't matter. Um, and and I, I went to work with David Ferguson, who I know through Matt Sweeney and Ferg is tight with John Prine and they share a studio together called the butcher shop. It's since closed, but I knew I wanted to record with Ferg. I heard great things. And I, my idea was just to do speed of the sound of loneliness, uh, which is a great John Prine song. It ended up being the title track of my EP, but, uh, yeah, for basically long story short, short Ferg, David Ferguson played my cover to Prine and he eventually heard it and he told me he liked it. And, and then I got to open for him a few times, sit in with him. And then finally, it was John's uh, New Year's show at the Grand Ole Opry. Um, and I went over with my family. And this is New Year's 2019 into 2020. And uh, I was asked to sit in with him, pick a song. So I, I picked Speed, uh, sorry, I picked um, How Lucky which I love, and he agreed to it. And then while I was mixing this EP with Ferg that took, you know, five years to make or whatever, because it would just be, I'd record when I was in Nashville, we called up Prine to see if he'd show up and basically show me how lucky and record it, you know, and take two, we got it. And he showed up at the studio. He's like, uh, you know, I love to sing with you, Kurt, you know, which was like part of him just being charming, but it was his way of saying, you know, it's good to see you. What so, you know, he's a hero. He, it's uh, for sure, and it, but, you know, yeah, it's tra tragic how we lost him during you know the ten the turning of the you know the world changed and it was just surreal to lose him that way. Uh, but I was I'm so glad I got to uh, work with him and uh, be around him as much as I did. You know, and uh, have I have friends who work for his label and stuff. So it's it's a beautiful family. You know. We are in the current studio with Kurt Vile. Now, Kurt, for as much uh, attention, deservedly so, as you get for your guitar prowess, I was reading of the credits to the album, and there's another instrument that you play. You play the trumpet. Oh, yeah, I do. That was my first instrument. I I want to get back on top of it. I'm really obsessed with this uh, Don Cherry album lately called Om Shanti Om, and tonight is the first night I meet up with an awesome jazz band called natural information society uh so i want to get better at my embouchure they call it don't ask me to define that but it's i need to get better on my trumpet but yeah i i, I pick it up now and then and i've played it on various recordings but i do play it on the first song on this new album called going on a plane today and then um James Stewart of the Sun Ra Orchestra, he played sax, and he came and he, he said, I'll double this melody. And he's like, whoever played the trumpet didn't play it very well, but I'll... And I was like, it was me! You know? <laughs> yeah. You're not going to believe this, but trumpet was my first instrument. I oh. only did it for four years, but uh, I, I'm sure you're far better than, than I ever got at any point. Uh, well, who knows? But, I, you know, I'm glad to... We're, well, we're brothers in a few ways. We got... Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> That's definitely uh, definitely the case. Uh, Kurt, uh, one of the last times you were in here was with Courtney Barnett, yep. who is a, a good friend and collaborator. You made an album together. And when I interviewed Courtney Barnett a couple of years ago, I noted that you two did a cover of her song, Out of the Woodwork. Do you have any sort of plans or nostalgia for going back into your own back, back catalog and being like, you know, I really want to record this with a, a totally new spin? I probably would at some point. Um, but that's the beauty of playing live. You know, we get to do it every night. Uh, and 
I'm recording every show right now, uh, inspired again by Sun Ra, who recorded every thing. So that's what that's what I'm gonna do from now on. Just record every little thing, just so I can be like Neil Young and be like, he's got a great quote uh, on that movie Muddy Track. He uses it against his bandmates, but he's always like, "Shall we review the tapes?" You know. So that's me. Well, we are here with Kurt Vile. He's going to play one more relative deep cut from his catalog. I want to give a thanks to Kurt Vile for stopping by. Thanks to our producer, Derek Stevens, and thanks to our engineers, Evan Clark, Eric Mani, and Peter Eklund, all for helping out with this session. And thanks to the listeners and members of Minnesota Public Radio as well. Kurt, thank you again for stopping by. Yeah, thank you so much. It's been an honor. I don't want to change, but I don't want to stay the same I don't want to go, but I'm running I don't want to work, but I don't want to sit around All day frowning oh. I don't want to give up, but I kind of want to lie down, but not sleep, just rest. Give me a break, how much does it really take to get my head out of here and I've been searching. I don't know what for I came across some girl She was a tomboy And I was a peeping Tom on that scene I was a peeping Tom, you know what I mean I was a I was a I was I was a I don't want to go, but it's a one-way street with me So I've been told, so I'm going When I'm down, I would never come around But you should be kind and read my mind I've been searching and I don't know what for and she was a tomboy and I admired her cause I was a peepin'
time on that scene I was peeping Tom, you know what I mean I was a I was a I was I was a I don't want to change, but I don't want to stay the same I don't want to go, but I'm running I don't want to work, but I don't want to sit around All day frown 